So here we are back at the Lazy Cook kitchen and uh, there are the ramsons or wild garlic. I've just sat them in some fresh water, some fresh filtered water and I'm going to leave them until I actually come to use them. The nettles to make them much easier to handle and to clean them, uh, what I do is I drop them into boiling water and just let them go for a few seconds, about 30 seconds. So I'm just blanching them basically. And once you've done this, um, well, A, they look like spinach and B, you can treat them just like spinach because they don't sting anymore. So I'll just give that a plunge to make sure it all goes down. And turn off the heat. So after about 30 seconds that will be ready to drain. And then I'll show you what I do with it. So once that's done, I simply drain them uh, in a colander and then I can either bag it and freeze it or bag it and chuck it in the fridge. At this point, there's no stinginess left in it at all. So you can safely handle it. The smell is rather like that of um, not unlike spinach. It's a kind of stocky veggie kind of smell. And uh, it's also really quite... Um, quite delicious and unlike spinach it is many times the nutritional value of spinach many times spinach is good but these are many times better so uh, we're going to make some pretty healthy pesto and serve that up with some slightly less healthy tortellini but uh, I'll show you all that in a minute so there you see I've squished out uh, all the liquid and put them into a freezer bag and they can either go in the freezer like this or you can do them in ice cubes so you've got a little bit and you can portion them out a little bit easier which is a handy way to keep them. I'll be making this pesto tomorrow as far as uh, I'm concerned uh, but you'll be seeing it in a couple of seconds. Okay, uh, stinging nettle and wild garlic pesto. If you haven't seen part one, which was the gathering phase where I, I went out into the wild and collected these uh, ramsons or wild garlic. So here we are. I've got what about two cups of uh, pressed, washed, fresh nettles. And I've got about, about half of that amount in total of uh, ramsons I would think something like that it's not a precise science one thing I didn't mention before was these little um, scapes which come off the ramsons at this time of year and quite often you can just pick a few of them and uh, and pickle them they're quite nice pickled but uh, in this case they're they're all going into the um, pesto right a pesto was traditionally done, it's from the Italian word meaning to pound, it was traditionally done in a, a pestle and mortar, something like this, um, but for ease and speed and everything else, I, I, tend, I tend to do it usually in my uh, food processor, and to that end I've got my food processor here. Right, so in order to do this recipe, you'll need what? Um, about two cups of pressed, washed uh, nettles, and about a cup, a cup and a half of ramsons, which are washed and they've been sitting in water. You'll need, these are lightly roast cashew nuts, unsalted, and they're 100 grams. Uh, I think these are lightly toasted pine nuts. Yeah, they're certainly toasted. They're lightly toasted pine nuts. Again, unsalted, 100 grams. You'll need some salt, pepper, and you'll need some extra virgin olive oil. 
and I've got 80 grams and it's just an 80 gram pack of shaved uh, Parmigiano Reggiano uh, which is superb strong flavoured cheese let's have a look at that very nice indeed and that's going to be the main strength of the flavouring and saltiness throughout this dish I'm just going to have a quick taste so I know where I am with the salt yeah that's good wow it's a fabulous cheese okay um, and then it's just a matter of getting everything into the um, food processor so I'm just going to break these off and drop them in let's bring all that to the front and then into that I'm going to put my nettles my cheese and the nuts good pesto is superb better than anything you can buy in a jar traditionally in Italy this is made of um, I'm going to put half of those in only 50 grams of um, cashews you can put them all in if you like and then I'm just going to put in a couple of tablespoons worth of extra virgin olive oil and I'll take that away, I'll spare your ears and I'll give that a blast. So you might see it gets to this stage like this, that means it needs more liquid and in this case that's a bit more oil. So I'm going to put a bit more oil into it and then drizzle oil into it as it's turning until it uh, forms a really nice slurry. Okay, uh, that's got it to a fairly fine paste. I'm, I'm going to need to go a little bit more, but I just want to taste it now. Add some salt and some pepper and uh, maybe some lemon juice. Let's have a look. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's lovely. Um, it's going to need some salt. I'm just going to put... Um, couple of pinches of salt in there you put in as much as you like and I like quite a lot of black pepper but how much you put in is certainly up to you and I think I'm just going to get a slice of lemon for that as well so I'm just going to take about a quarter of a lemon squeeze it in And I think we can go the rest of those uh, cashew nuts. So we're now at 100 grams of cashew nuts. So I'll give that a whiz now until it's um, finished. So there we have it. Beautifully textured. It's still got a couple of nice little bit lumps of nuts in it, but I particularly like it that way. If you don't, just blend it and blend it and blend it until uh, all the textures... Um, got to where you want it to be uh, I think I'm going to serve that up now with some um, tortellini so uh, there you go boys and girls um, what I've done is I've put a link to a couple of videos by Adam Hartigan uh, which are really great knowledge about uh, wild food In uh, one link will be to stinging nettles and another one will be to uh, dandelions which I think everybody needs to know about. And so uh, I'll just finish off by showing you a picture of this served up with some tortellini. Mm -hmm.